All right. So today what we're going to do is we're going to continue our look at two-way tables. So we've done that before. We had the other parts stuck in. But the two-way tables. But what we're going to talk about is a special case of two-way table. And it's what's called conditional. Now, conditional means that you're given some condition that changes what the, thing, the thing that you're allowed to look at. For example, if I had every boy and girl in New Zealand, right, but then I started looking at students in, in, at Queen Margaret, some of those students wouldn't exist because every boy and girl in New Zealand, if I was just talking about Queen Margaret, I wouldn't have any what? Boys, exactly. So you see that I'm not allowed to look at that category. And that's what conditional does. It tells us that we, it limits the category, right? So when we have conditional, it limits the row or column that we can use. So, the total will not be everybody, but just that row or column. Okay. So remember that when the others, we were always able to use that big grand total as the total out of everybody. And that was because we were selecting a random dog or random cat or whatever. It was out of everything on the whole chart. So we were able to use that big grand total that is at the bottom of the chart, right? But this time, we're going to be limited. It's going to say you can only select from girls, or you can only select from the boys, or you can only select from cars, red cars. Some kind of limitation that means we can't use everybody in the study. We're only able to use one row or one, or one I'm sorry, one row across or one column, right? Because remember the cells, the chart is columns up and down, rows across, right? So it's going to change the total that we can use. Now we're going to look back at, we're going to go to Education Perfect and look at some examples of these and, and look at these. The probability is still the same. The probability of an event is still the successes over the total. But in this case, our total is going to be limited to a, set, to a certain category. Really easy but you have to learn, your job is to learn to read carefully so you know, can I, am I selecting something out of the total group or am I restricted to one category? And we usually have words like given, is, or if. And you'll see what I mean by that, these key words. If the first person chosen was a girl. What is the chance of coming another girl or something? So that's a bad example. But anyway, you'll see, you'll see the wording in just a minute. All right? So let's just go to our Education Perfect and look at some examples of these and practice this. Again, the probability itself doesn't change, but what you're able to choose from does. Okay, so in the beginning here, they're just running through a basic two-way table, and they give you a different name. They call it contingency tables. We're happy with two-way tables. You don't ever need to know that they're called contingency tables. But remember how that works. Here's a two-way table. The first column is plays rugby. Second one is doesn't play rugby. Remember, you can abbreviate these if you want to. You could call that one A. So what would be the not A? A apostrophe, which is read as A prime, yeah, A apostrophe, A prime, whatever you'd like. So football could be B, which would make this B prime or B apostrophe, right? You can abbreviate, but if you do abbreviate, then you must put it somewhere so we have a key to know. You can't just start calling them A and B otherwise. But if you have rugby and football, you could just as easily call that rugby and not rugby, football and not football, right? I think that in letters that represent the items you're measuring makes more sense than A's and B's, but you're going to see them do both, so I want you to be aware, okay? So then 
<clears throat> this one doesn't have any numbers in it, so they start putting in some numbers. Let's just look at what that looks like. So here it is. You have the numbers in there, and you have one total, but you don't have the total for the rows or the columns. Remember that you must have totals for the rows across and for the columns up and down in order to complete the, the chart. So here it is all finished and filled out for you, right? How did they get that 38? Simply added the two numbers there in the, in the column to get that number down there, right? And the 20, same way, 12 and, 20, 18, 12 and 8 gave you the 20 across. And then this one and this one should make, sh make sure they both add up to 60 to, so that you know you didn't make a mathematics error or small arithmetic error, okay? Now, once you have the table completed, you can use information to find probabilities. For example, this one's just like the ones we did. What is the probability that a student selected at random? So does that mean I'm limited to a certain group or is that out of everybody? <coughs> at random means out of everybody, right? That means any possible person on this chart, okay? So that means we're using the grand total, plays rugby. And so we just go to everyone that plays rugby out of everyone in the study. Every student was, that was asked, right? So 38 over 60, which of course you would simplify the fraction or change it. Make sure, guys, now this one they didn't abbreviate, make sure you put in this probability statement that will get you, an, a, not a, that will give you a low grade faster than anything else you could do, right? You, you can't, if you just put that, even as a simplified fraction or as a decimal or a percentage or whatever, even if you got that right, but you did not include that probability plays rugby, or probability whatever you called it, if you called it A or B or just R, probability of R is fine, but you have to put that description in there. The pro it's called a probability statement. If you don't put that in there, it's wrong on every probability. Remember that? Okay, I can't say it enough. And then, of course, you would reduce that fraction. So in this particular case, we weren't limited to anybody. We just chose somebody at random. So look at this one. What's the probability the student selected at random does not play football? So that means everybody in the does not play football over everybody in the study. So 40 out of 60, so two thirds if you reduced it, okay? Remember, all you have to do is put it in your calculator and hit exec execute and it'll, it'll simplify the fraction for you. And then you can change it to a decimal with your SD key, S slash D key, and then you can change it to a percent by multiplying by 100, excellent, okay? So pay attention to how they want the answers written. I am not happy with the way they've written these answers, why? They're not simplified. We would get you for that on an, uh, if it was an assessment, okay? I guess you, if you're writing math books, you can get away with it. All right, so here we go. What is the problem of the student selected random? Plays rugby, but not football. So plays rugby is good and not football, so that's this cell here, so 26 out of the 60. Again, we're talking about a student at random, so therefore we can use everybody, right? And plays rugby, but not football, 26 out of 60, and of course you've reduced that. So you'll see that something, most questions are using at random, that's everybody in the group, right? So all of these, now these are, these are actually probabilities already, and that's why they are, the to grand total of them is one, because the probability of everything always has to add up to what? One. one. Now, normally, if we had probabilities, we probably wouldn't use a two-way table. We would use probability, what? Tree. But the reason they haven't used a tree here is because there are so many categories. That'd be a lot of branches, right? But no big deal, because it's only child and adult, so it only branches twice each time. It's not that big of a deal. Or branch easily, it's not big deal. Um, on, the, on the assessment, you're going to have to use the one they tell you. If they tell you to use a tree, you'll use a tree. If they tell you to use a table, you use a table. You don't have to make that choice, okay? But usually, if you're given probabilities, you use a, you use a tree. But in this case, they use a table. They're interchangeable. What's the probability that a randomly selected customer is a child? So that's randomly, that's any child. So 0 0.55 out of what? One, so in other words, this is already a probability. If you divide by one, you get the same thing you started with, so it's just 0 0.55, right? Okay, what's the probability the randomly chosen customer was an adult that rode the roller coaster or Graviton? 
So adult who rode the roller coaster, how many, what was the probability for that? 0 0.15. And for the Gravitron, Gravitron adults was 0 0.16. So that's two probabilities. What do I need to do to them? There you go. Add them together. Okay. Now again, you would probably see that written as a tree instead of on the chart, but just to show you that. Now, here's what we're talking about with the other, the other case of this. Sometimes you're given less to choose from, right? It's conditional. They call it reduced. It doesn't matter. Reduced sample spaces. In other words, you're not allowed to use everybody in the table when you're working with these. So let's look at some examples of these. So probabilities are often influenced by previous events. That means you're not dealing with the whole sample space, but reduce a restricted part. The words if or given are often key words that suggest that a sample space has been reduced. Okay, so let's look at an example of this. It's really easy, but you just have to be careful when you're reading it. The results below are a survey who are told to choose their preferred painkiller. Okay, so you see there are two different painkillers. We're talking about males and females. Your totals are already there, so nothing missing from this chart, yeah? And they're just raw data. They're just numbers. These are not percent. These are not, uh, not uh, probabilities, and I can always tell that because the bottom number is not a one. If you ever see a one or 100% there, you know that it's a probability table, right? Okay? Find the probability that a randomly selected person prefers ibuprofen given that they are male. So given that they are male means I am only allowed to look at the males, right? So that's what it looks like when you have a restriction. So that means I can only use things that are in that column. So you see how it works? Given that they are males it means I cannot even think about anything else anywhere else in the table. Okay, so let's look at that probability. Probability that they want ibuprofen Given that they are a male, you've got to include that, that restriction in there because if you just put probability of ibuprofen, that means anybody, right? So you have to include that restriction. So how many like ibuprofen? Out of how many men? Ooh, be careful. Out of how many men? There you go. We restricted it, right? It's not out of everybody. It's just out of how many males. Okay. And that's the only difference. And of course, you would simplify that and they might ask you for a percentage or a decimal, whatever. Do you have a question? Okay, all right. Let's look at another one real quick. Find the probability that a randomly selected person is female if they prefer paracetamol. So what's my restriction? Female or paracetamol? Paracetamol, okay. We want to know if they were female, if they prefer paracetamol. So that's my restriction. So it's this row. So be careful. Again, it's about making sure that you're just reading carefully. And the key words here are usually if or given. Okay? There we go. Now, how many females were there in this? And so again, we're not allowed to look at any other groups, right? So just ignore this completely. How many females were there in this group? Out of how many people in this group? And we'd have to write the probability statement. So the probability of female if paracetamol. And you can abbreviate, okay? So 60 over 80, right? Which comes out to what, three-fourths? Okay? Make sure you simplify it. But your calculator can do that for you. Just enter the, cal enter the number in if you don't want to feel like doing it yourself. It's good? All right. Let's look at a few more, and then we're going to do... Uh, they don't give us some more. All right. So let's do a, some, a couple of questions we'll do together, and then I'm going to give you some. Remember, when we're working together, we'll do the first one completely together, just asking everybody to sing out and give me the answer. Then the second one, I'm going to call on people, but still working together, and then I'm going to, the next one, I'm going to give you a problem, you'll work on it, and then I'll call on people to answer it for me. It's good? Okay. Here we go. So, look at this one. Moana asks all the students in her year level if they have a part-time job, if they receive pocket money, and then records the results in the table below. So, part-time job, no job, 
get pocket money, do not get pocket money, and then of course the totals. So is there anything missing from this table? No, it's all done for you, right? If anything's missing, they may have a missing number there, but, but I can take that one minus that one to fill in that box, right? You can use addition or subtraction to find missing numbers. And many times they may give you a, t a box that looks like this in the blue, what's missing from the whole thing. The totals. Remember, you cannot do probability without totals. Okay, so if it is missing those totals, then you need to, you need to build, put those rows, that row and that column in for totals. Okay, all right, but in this case, it's completely full. Right. So let's just look at the first question. It says, what is the probability that a, that a randomly selected student has a part-time job? Okay, so it's just a randomly selected student has a part-time job. Are there any restrictions on this one? No, it's out of everybody in the group. Just all we want is everybody who has a part-time job, okay? So everybody who has a part-time job is how, what number? Everybody? What? 29. Out of how many total people in the study? 53. And will that simplify? No, but remember, when y'all are working these, I want you to practice. I want it as a decimal, and I also want it as a percent, just so you can practice, okay? All right, but once you have it in your calculator, it's just a matter of changing it to a decimal and then multiply it by 100, all right? So everybody have your cal get your calculators out, because in a minute, on the next one, I'm gonna ask you to make sure to, you know how to convert them, because it's really important. All right, it's all good. Check it just to make sure we're on the right track. There you go, 29 out of 53. Okay. All right. So let's look at the next one. Here we go. We've got the same table. This one I want, I'm going to call on people to work with me here. All right. So we'll stop the recording and then...